this. Like he had his girl stolen from him and everybody liked this guy all of a sudden. And what did you think he was supposed to do? And like people figured out, I think what you're kind of talking about, the redemptive qualities, people started to kind of go like, no, this is the character that we should be cheering, not LaRusso. Had you seen those before you went into Cobra Kai? Well, I hate to confess this, but actually I produced all those videos. So uh, <laughs> that was my that was my campaign, dude. Um, yeah, no, I did. I would see them. They were they were fun to watch. You know, it's so funny. Like, you know, decades later, people are doing the replay and going, hold on a second. Like we missed something. You know, there was a squirrel on the field, like in Hot Tub Time Machine. Like, hold on a minute. <laughs> you know? So uh, p- people are. uh they're looking back going, it was, it was an illegal kick, which, you know, arguably it was. Now, you know, that's the that's the fun debate. That whole kind of, you know, was it an illegal kick gave a lot of uh, gas for the for the concept and all that. But, yeah, it was fun. It was fun to see people dig that up. And uh, I didn't take it seriously. I mean, do I, do I believe that stuff? No, I think it's just fun that what was really telling was that people cared this many years later. That was like a, somehow affected them so much that they were putting up arguments about it. It became this kind of fun thing to to chime in on, you know, kind of tongue in cheek. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't think any of that was really serious. I think it was somebody had a good time with it and it went viral and then it kind of everybody piggybacked on that. And, um, you know, there's arguments to be said for that. I mean, uh, you know, you could, there's, there's arguments on both sides of that, which we play within the show. Um, and then Ralph and I play with in real life, which is a lot of fun too. So yeah, <laughs> and that's you know, of, so, sorry, so that's kind of why it's so interesting yeah. to me because this was your first film. Uh, it yeah. was like the thing that started your like career, like in, in, in such a big way. And then here it is all these years later. And most people never get that opportunity to, to kind of revisit the thing that kicked them off. Did you, did you was yeah. this like an open call audition or did you have an agent or, or like, how did you, how did this, uh, how did you get this film? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I had a manager way back when, and I was auditioning for a few things, and one of them was Karate Kid. Uh, I read the script. Well, actually, no, I didn't read the script. They called me in. I met Caro Jones and Penny DuPont, the casting directors. They handed me the script. They said, we think you're great for this part. And went home and read it, and he's, he's a karate black belt. He's a motorcycle gang leader. Didn't know how to ride a motorcycle. Didn't know karate. I thought this isn't <laughs> this isn't gonna work out, you know. And then uh, then I so I went in on the, an audition basically, and then went in read for John Avildsen. And there was a whole room full of other Johnnies. I'm just, I'll never forget being almost the energy of the room of all the Johnnies auditioning was enough to make me go outside and sit in my dad's 1970 Volvo and crank some <laughs> Ronnie James Dio and Zebra and just go, hold on, I'm going to clear my head of this for real. That's the truth. And then they came out, they're like, where are you? It's your turn. And then I walked in past everybody and, and auditioned in front of John Avildsen and um, a scene that was cut out of the film. And he kind of looked at me. So well, you're a little bigger than our karate kid. Uh, I said, yeah, well, Kareem Abdul, uh, Bruce Lee was smaller than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And he said, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so let me think about it. So I went home and then he called me back another time. I read with Ralph weeks later and went home again. And then another week later, they called me and they stretched me in a room with Pat Johnson, who trained us for the karate kid. He just kind of bent me in different positions and see if I was limber. He got on the bat phone, said something to somebody at Columbia. And I went home and got a call that I got the part. The funny thing is I got the part they didn't even know what part it was, whether it was Johnny, Tommy, Bobby, or Dutch. Or I said, which, which, which one of the Cobra Kai's is it? And they're like, oh, Johnny? I'm like, yeah, it's the main guy. That's great. So yeah, it was just, that was my, that was my audition process for it right out of the gate. You know, it was like, um, did you stick with karate at all or no? Was it yeah, like, fuck, I actually like this. I did like it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I stayed with it for many years after that in the same style. I was trained for the film Tong Sudo. Um, and uh, Pat Johnson worked with me and then I did some other karate movies. Uh, so I had to stay in shape for that. I love it, man. And then, I, and then I dropped off, you know, for many years and now Cobra Kai came back around and now I'm back at it. Have any of the uh, old cast that haven't been on the show yet reached out? Cause I feel like as the seasons go on, you know, new characters get brought back. That's kind of the fun of the show that everybody's getting brought back. We're getting updates on anybody on everybody. Have you heard from anybody yeah. going like, you know, like, I, I mean, I, it's a big show. I got this idea, you know, this character, <laughs> yeah, yeah. seeing what he's done. Yeah. You're like, you're in the movie yeah. for five minutes, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think, um, you know, the most of the, the, the messages I get are, you know, hey, so happy for you in the show. It's great. And it's, uh, you know, I think everybody in Karate Kid 1, 2, and 3 are in the canon and the universe of being possibly uh, put into the show and, and weaved into the storyline. All that's on the writers and when they want to pull them in. 
Um, I've just have, I have great relationships with all the cast from, from all three movies and uh, I've had some really nice text messages back and forth with, with many of them. Um, sure. They'd love to be on it. And I'd love for them to, it, they have to work into this story though. It has to be an organic. Yeah. It can't just be, you know, Hey, they, there are, cause that's, we want to see them again. It has to work into the story that's being created today. So um, how, yeah. how mind blowing was it when the show launched on Netflix, because it was out on YouTube and it was like popular, like people liked it. Yeah. Like people were talking about it. People liked it. It was the whole thing. But man, once it showed up on Netflix, it yeah. got huge. Like it became like one of the biggest shows in television, really. Was it was it mind blowing yeah. just that how big that transition was? Yeah, truly. I was excited when, when Netflix picked it up because YouTube couldn't continue with the show. They stopped doing um, scripted shows. So we were all of a sudden homeless for maybe six to eight months, and we we didn't know if we had it anywhere else to go. Sony was shopping it around. YouTube gave them the the license to go ahead and try to set it up somewhere else and bring season three, which was already shot, um, mm. and sell it to somebody else. So we had yeah, season three was in the can. YouTube all YouTube had to do was click a button, and three season three was live and out. And Sony's like, wait, we got to keep that pressure and let us set it up somewhere else. And if we can get a buy, they can then they can release it fresh and and pull the audience. So we're not starting kind of goofy foot a year later so uh they got so we were on the phone with sony jeff frost over at sony keeping us posted on um how that was going and it looked like there were some contenders and netflix kept taking the lead and all of a sudden boom they, we got the call that they're making the deal with netflix it's happening with netflix just that alone just hearing that it's going to netflix you suddenly feel like you got pulled out of the ocean with you know dripping wet saved going all right thank you you know and um so I was happy just to see it in the comedy set. Like, it's going to be great. It's going to be in the comedy section. It'll probably be in the family section. And, you know, just the idea that But when it did come out and it blew up the way it did um, and there it was trending in number one and then worldwide, I, I, nothing could have prepared me for that. Um, and it was thrilling and, and exciting. I qu still haven't quite got my head around that. Too much, uh, you know, stay very micro in the character when I'm doing my work, and I try not to look outside at all the noise and everything. But it is definitely a, a great kind of a great hug back from from the world. I get all kinds of messages from many countries, and to see that it's saturated like that, and everybody's involved and excited about the show is it's awesome, man. It's a main stage, you know. It's like we were saying, like YouTube, YouTube as great as they were, was in many ways kind of minor league, and then this way we've kind of joined the majors, and that it's that it went out and it's working. And I think we needed those first two seasons three seasons to get the rhythm to get the show um so we're really ready for netflix we pitched it originally to netflix we we were close to having a deal with netflix at the very beginning but i think that it was better for it to go this way so we found our show found our our, our chemistry how everything's working and now netflix is taking it from here and they've done an amazing job and what they did was yeah. so genius was they they didn't release season three instead of saying okay everybody's been waiting for season three they said no hold the door you know here's karate kid one two and three so you can get in the, you get this around your head and then um get your head around all the canon of this and then they released seasons one and two again yeah. and they wanted the world to catch up to it and now we had the fans from youtube we had the world and then then in january they they dropped season three and it was very smart marketing and it's been awesome. And we just finished season four. So, Yeah, it was smart. I went back and watched the original. I mean, I, I've seen the original Karate Kid quite a few times, but I went back and watched it again. And it's nostalgic for people who are in my age group. You know, it's like you're watching something you watched when you were younger, and it's like it's fun to watch it again knowing that there's a continuation. Because I hadn't seen the – so like knowing, all right, there's new storyline. So, yeah, I'll watch it and then just kind of jump into this. Um, yeah. Were you in part three or was it just – it was just clips, old clips? It was just archive footage from, from one. Okay. And two, yeah, I was not in. Do you hate that when that happens? Like, fuck, I would love to have done some new shit for this. What I'm in Karate Kid three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you like Christ? They're using old clips. Like they, they should have. I would have done something else. Uh, no, no, no. I was really happy with. I was really happy not being in the film. I was happy with it just mm -hmm. being Karate Kid one. You know, Karate Kid. They didn't. I was called in for Karate Kid three. John Appleton, director, called me in when he was casting it, and he said, "I'm trying to figure out Karate Kid three. It wasn't even written yet." And uh, we had some some meetings about it, but it didn't work out. Um, no regrets about not being in that. And as it happened, I wasn't I wasn't bummed either. I was, you know, rooting it on and, you know, moving on to other things myself.
Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. You when did you? Me, I would have been I, jealous. I, I would have been jealous and bitter. You're, you're much nicer than I am. I would have been, I would have been <laughs> jealous. <laughs> you're jealous Are and you? bitter. Why? You could, yeah. I, I would have wanted what they had. I would, I would have been furious and rooting against it. You're definitely a better person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Was it different going in and shooting season four? Because I feel like that was probably the season that had the most pressure on it in the sense that this is now like a big show that the world is waiting for, mm-hmm. right? There's there's expectations that are different now. Yeah, and that's what I was saying earlier. You, you can't think about it. You can't look at it. You got to, you know, you just can't look at the, you can't look at the crowd. You just have to, you know, you go in knowing that it's working. And so you have a sense of, um, I wouldn't say security because that's, you know, but you have a sense of it, it's, it, you know, it's, it's doing well. And that's good. That's a good feeling. You know, season one, it was an experiment. You know, we're diving into the belly of these characters. This is going to work. We didn't know. We know it's working. So you go in with that. Um, but if you play to, you know, oh, my gosh, the expectations are so big. Or we have to serve this or serve that or they like this or they like that. Then you're stuck and you're repeating yourself and and you're 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 doing you're undoing the work you did because the work that was done to get you here was was micro. It was in the tunnel. So, I, you know, we get the set. We all were super you know, amped up that the show had been doing well. And we, you know, it was a big team, all the crew, um, our producers, our line producers, our grips, our, uh, the whole team came together. And, and then we all put our heads in the sand, went to work. So yeah, I, you can't think about that. It's kind of a trick to do, I think, because you can allow yourself to get um, overwhelmed by that thought or entertain that thought. But the whole thing about acting is you got to just, you got to cut all that out. You got to cut all those eyeballs out and trust the writing and trust the character. And then, you know, then later I'll worry about it and hope they like it. Well, season four is uh, scheduled to be uh, popping up on Netflix at the end of the year or so, sometimes, sometime later this year. Um, but in the meantime, if for any reason you're one of the few that have not watched this show or are not up to date on the show, it really is amazing what they've done with it. It's all, every episode's yeah. on Netflix. So, you know, if you haven't seen Cobra Kai yet, I don't know what, you've been waiting for but go check it out and uh yeah. it's great man congratulations on everything yeah oh thank good you good luck man. with I the emmys it. too i know you guys want uh, uh there's a, uh, a push for like i mean i'm gonna yeah good luck with that i mean i know that the first show that's that's a great thing so i hope you guys get some yeah i hope the show gets recognized the guy the creators of this show have done something miraculous they've taken this ip and turned it into something fresh and new and relevant it's not a nostalgia grab it's something very special if karate kid when they pitched it to me they said you know if karate kid didn't exist the show could still exist and we could call it bad sensei just like bad santa but you're like the bad <laughs> sensei yeah. you know so uh yeah it's nice it'd be it would be nice uh you know so uh we're doing the work and and whatever happens from that you know uh, is great the, the the feedback and the the fact that the critics and the fans are loving it that's that's what it's all about for me so uh great. but thank awesome, you very man. much guys appreciate it man Good talking. Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. All right. Be well. All right. Okay. So, um, I guess should we, we take uh, a uh, should we take quick a break? break? Yeah. yeah. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be I'll, uh, I'll we'll tinkle. be right back. I might to... do more. Ooh, could be a mix. A little bit of both. Could be a mix. Yeah. Could be a mix. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Could be a mix. We'll find out after this. Yes. It's time to live, laugh, and love. Check. One, one, two. Jim and Sam are back. Come on. Cowboy. Yeah. Cowboy. up my game and I'ma head out west with real women come true. equipped with scripts and fake press find a nest in the hills chill like Flint buy an old drop top find a spot to pit then I'm a kid rock it up and down your block I like kid rock because a lot of times you'll be listening and you'll go who's singing this but if you listen long enough he'll let you know kid rock give a toast to the sun drink most kid rock songs have a reference to kid rock so <laughs> So it's helpful. Well, welcome back. It's Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. This is it just like ACDC? Just as good. 
just as timeless too, I find. 